So today we're gonna to talk about separating securities and how to make sure that if you're gonna sell one of your properties now or in the future, that you're gonna be able to keep that cash. And what we wanna make sure is that, you know, if you want that money, you know, for your retirement fund or to put into a business or another property, that you don't end up selling a property that has debt on it or a security on it from a bank, thinking that you're gonna be able to keep all of the money, it's called net proceeds from that sale, when in reality, you're gonna to have to pay the bank back more money than you anticipated. And so let's let's have a, a look at a few quick examples. So on this side, what we've got is three properties in a portfolio that's all at the same bank. And this is quite common. And uh, whether you have your property or one or two of the properties in a look-through company or trust, or you think there's like a clear separation between your portfolio um, within the bank, Quite often, it's actually at the bank's discretion. So let's have a look. Let's say you're thinking, oh, you wanna buy another property. Um, you found you wanna upgrade one of your rentals from a cash flow, you know, negative or neutral property to something that's a bit, has a bit more potential for cash flow or capital gains. So you're gonna sell this property here. And um, once you've sold that property, you're gonna complete the sale, uh, complete the purchase of another property. So. In this scenario, there's 600,000 on this property of debt and property is worth 800K. So you think, okay, sell the property, I'm gonna be able to keep the 200,000 difference. But as you can see, because there's debt on the other properties in the portfolio, what you're actually gonna to have to do is check with the bank, regardless of how the structures uh, are set up, is are you gonna to have to pay back 600 on the sale or actually 800 because um, there's other lending in your portfolio and the lending policies as at banks change all the time so you might find yourself in a situation where your income has changed since you originally got the debt or the lending policy has become a bit tougher which is is happening a lot, a lot more often um, so the way that you would get around uh, to make sure that you get to keep this two hundred thousand uh, from that sale is potentially move this property to another bank, and that way it's completely separated. It's got six hundred of uh, thousand of debt on it, and it's eight hundred thousand dollar property. Then if you sell it, um, you know it's clearly you're going to be able to keep that uh, two hundred thousand. And one way that we might actually do it is we would say, okay, before you sell, let's shift some of the debt onto the other properties. And then, so you might end up selling it when it only has 200,000 of debt on it. And, um, and you know, in the situation where it's at the same bank, you might actually have to separate it completely, uh, freehold it or uh, put it in another bank to really make sure that you're gonna keep that money. Now, the way to set it up properly is consider using two banks right from the start or to uh, refinance one of your properties. Now, setting it up for the future sale. So you can see that in this situation, um, there's a property at a second bank that um, you know has 200,000 of equity in it, and there's not gonna be any issues. If you sell this property, you're gonna be able to keep the money because this bank here, bank A, um, you know, let's say you put it with ASB, and this is um, Westpac, you know, you're selling a property at ASB is a clear separation. You know, there's not gonna be any issues. And before you sell that property, you might even decide to shift some of that debt over. And what we're helping a lot of people do at the moment is separate securities and actually, um, you know, remove this cross collateralization because when you have everything at one bank, what they do is they just treat it like a big pie and they take all of your debt and all of your assets, combine it together, and then when you're trying to make financial decisions, selling or buying, they're looking at your whole situation. Whereas really you wanna structure it so that you're giving yourself the advantage of having lots of different future options. And you know, Westpac's never gonna say, hey, the way that you can get what you want is to involve a second bank. ASB's never gonna say that, you know. Bankers are not gonna say, hey, look, the way that you can do this is why don't you freehold this property and don't let the bank have a claim over it? Um, and so you've just got to say, hey, look, before I sell this property 
am I going to get all of the money from the sale that I expect to get or is the bank going to make me pay back the 600 plus this 200 and so I'm actually selling an asset that's producing cash for me and that's getting capital gains and then the worst thing is you don't get the money and then you can't buy again so what you've done is you've had a three property portfolio and then you can't buy that third property again and so you're putting yourself in a worse position by making sure you're not um, by by not asking the right questions and so you know that's that's what mortgage secrets is all about you got to know what the right questions are to ask so check out the case study below and uh, fire questions our way if you've got them